Hello. Um, so I've taken it upon myself, I've chosen as a uh, life's purpose to save, uh, to do my best to save humanity and to make the world a paradise for everybody. Well, if that's not the meaning of life, then I don't know what it is. But of course I need your help. So that's what this is about. A lot of people come to the movement uh, and then they want to know what to do. So this, this is what this is about. These are specific actions that all of us can take as individuals to start transitioning to what I call the resource-based gift society. Uh, so I use the term gift society for a specific reason. This gift society is the society that uses a resource-based economy. And the reason why I use the word gift is because in my 10 years of promoting the resource-based economy, I found that a lot of people confuse it for a barter economy. And the word gift makes it very clear that in the society of the future, in the resource-based economy, products and services are made available to everybody without a price tag, without trade, servitude, or debt of any kind. And the specific actions, reality is that solutions are a lot simpler than we imagine usually. We, we like to push a button and have everything solved on its own. And, but in reality, it, it's a matter of consciousness, of us consciously doing something that is boring and laborious, but that's how we actually create something great. So I'd like to start with a couple quotes. The Lorax is a wonderful cartoon. I highly recommend it. It basically very well describes the, the values of uh, the Zeitgeist movement for everybody. And unless someone like you, like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And the other quote is by uh, Khalil Gibran, which is uh, the author of The Prophet uh, and the poem on giving. I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful poem. So a little knowledge that acts is infinitely more valuable than much knowledge that is idle. So like Peter said, accomplishing this transition will require both a creative initiative and an activist initiative. And so that's what the do-it-yourself transition plan includes. It has a project for, uh, as a creative initiative and a, uh, two that are of the activist initiative that are to set in motion and popularize uh, the new economic mode. So the creative initiative is Project Expand Free Collaboration Networks. And the objective is to develop the efficiency enhancing systems that will compose a new economic mode to reduce trade. That is a quote from uh, the New Human Rights Movement, the book by Peter Joseph. And uh, the, the activist initiative are to popularize these, these things, both the gift society and the, this transition plan. So we, we get people to start to do this. And like Buck, Buckminster Fuller said, you never change something by fighting the existing reality. You create a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And that's what Project Expand Free Collaboration Networks is about. It's the creative initiative. So a free collaboration network, the objective of this uh, project is to provide goods and services for free to everybody and to detach ourselves with that from the trade economy. So, basically, what the free, a free collaboration network is, is what businesses are in the present trade society, but in the gift society, uh, they, instead of, instead of um, providing services and products, for money and with people that are working for money in the business, everything is for free. It's volunteers and the products and services that are provided are for free. So that's what the definition of a free collaboration network is. is a group of people, a network of people that share a communication tool or a platform or a real space to provide goods and services for free and in which people, the contribution is either not necessary or all contributions are of equal value. 
So there are many different kinds of free collaboration networks. It's, it's a very broad definition and includes many different types of uh, organizations. It's very, very easy to create a free collaboration network. Like I said, it's not like we are lacking the tools to create this new society. It depends on us. It's up to us to create it. And so, for instance, a free collaboration network is it's very easy. All you need is, uh, for instance, I created two in, in Reus, where I live. And what I did is I just started a, a WhatsApp group. Like, it's that easy. And I did WhatsApp specifically because that's what everyone uses. And so it, it was very direct and it was just in their face. They didn't have to learn how to use an app or anything. And then what I did is I invited friends and neighbors and people of different organizations and people in the street, I talk about it. And the group had a simple rule, which was that every message had to be to ask to borrow something or to, um, to, to reply to someone who asked for something. All right, and then everything else is done privately to uh, the, the logistics. And it's working very well. And so we have one, that's, that's a resource bank, what I just described. That's a distributed resource bank. Now there's, there's centralized resource banks, which are called sometimes libraries of things, which has like a real space that holds the stuff. Um, there are many types, like I said, there are land banks, which are similar, but for uh, plots of land. Lodging banks, like uh, I'm sure you've heard of Couchsurfing, which is a network worldwide in which you can travel all around the world and find place to stay for free. Uh, gift spaces, some, sometimes they're, when they're real space, it's, a, uh, it's called a free store, or they can also be on a platform. Uh, food sharing networks, okay, so like a gift space that is a free sharing network, a food sharing network, is for instance a refrigerator. There are a lot of places that are starting to do this. They're putting refrigerators in public and people can then put their leftovers and produce there. Community gardens are to grow the food. Collective energy generators are for energy. It's the same idea but for energy. Carpooling networks, open workshops. Uh, sometimes they're called maker spaces but they can be for free. Uh, repair cafes, we're going to have someone talking about that later. Uh, skill teaching platforms like Khan University, for instance, as an example. Community aid networks and universal basic services. I like to point out universal basic services because a lot of people haven't heard about this because it's an actual threat to the system. Unlike basic income, basic income uh, We've, we're hearing about it because it's a capitalist solution to the problems that we're facing today. And it doesn't, although it solves the problem of poverty, it doesn't solve the underlying problem of the monetary dictatorship. Universal basic services are basically the application of the resource-based economy right, to, right, right now. And it's, it gives all the benefits of, of basic income which is providing all the basic needs for free to everybody. And at the same time, it frees us from the monetary dictatorship. I call it a dictatorship because, uh, like they say in Spanish, quien paga, manda. So the way that we expand free collaboration networks is by using them, instead of finding when we need something before we look for it for in a you know, regular trade to buy it, we look for it in a, a free collaboration network. Uh, we contribute to them by offering what we have and we advertise them to get more people to come to these networks. So these are a bunch uh, of free collaboration networks that already exist today that are working very well and there are many more, I just put some here. Okay, so we'll move on to the activist initiative. So Project Soul Gift Society, as Peter said, the biggest issue is or education and we are a seed planting organization. So what it is about is planting seeds is basically what in the commercial realm is called advertising. But we call it planting seeds or sowing seeds 
because we're not after people's money. We're trying to grow something. And like Jack Fresco said, when you leave here, if you don't talk about it, nothing's going to happen. Turns out that word of mouth is much more effective than regular than advertising, than social media. Word of mouth. If the most efficient thing we can do to improve the world is to tell other people that now there's plenty for everyone. So the objective, the adept, obje, objective is to expose everybody to the world uh, of the world to this new train of thought. And uh, like Ryan Harvey said, an idea is like a time bomb spreading its diffuse. So the scientific evidence is there's a, a, a report in Physics Review that was published in Physics Review called Social Consensus Through the Influence of Committed Minorities. We show how the prevailing majority opinion in a population can be rapidly reversed by a small fraction of randomly distributed committed agents who consistently proselytize the opposing opinion and are immune to influence. Specifically, we show that when the committed fraction grows beyond a critical value, there is a dramatic decrease in the time taken for the entire population to adopt the committed opinion. So the, co the critical value is 10%. We've reached that 10%. Just that most people are not, they don't believe it's possible. So it's very important for us to encourage people. So randomly distributed committed agents, which are us, wherever we are, consistently proselytizing. That's what we have to do. That's, that's all we have to do now. And are immune to influence. This is very important because the opposition is constantly trying to discourage us and redirect us. So the strategies are basically exposing as many people as possible to the names of the movements. There are many, there are thousands of movements that are working towards the gift society. Uh, the names of the authors, the logos, uh, the content, making it very easy and available. Like I said, it's the simple things, but we have to do them regularly. That's all it, it takes. Just over and over and over again, every day, doing this. And expose people to the facts that lead to the Resource Gift Society. So the most important fact that uh, sadly is often left out, some, the main argument of the Zeitgeist Movement is that the common good is enemy of business, and business is enemy of the common good. And it's very simple, really. The common good and business are both involved in satisfying needs. And businesses, they, they satisfy needs to make money. And if they have to constantly find new needs and create new needs, which is called creating markets. And the common good satisfies needs because that's what's good. And so then there, it, the common good eliminates markets. So that's why they're diametrically opposed. And that's the main problem with the market system. So the tactics are, there are many different tactics. These are some that I do regularly. Uh, you can do things that are just, just telling people about it, distributing flyers. So telling people about it, actually, if you just recommend something like this to someone, anyone, whether you know them or not, that's actually worth commercial, that has a commercial value of around $50. Like, and it costs us nothing. Just, as, just as a sentence, you know? Um, adding a link to our email signature, so like every, every email we send, we, we're, we're sending seeds. Uh, for instance, writing on our car with chalk or bumper stickers, saying happy gift society, uh, instead of welcome or goodbye. Um, for instance, doing the sign language E for in, in pictures or on stage or C for collaborative commons. E is for resource-based economy, C is for collaborative commons, and human rights. So these are ways that we can, people get curious about it, and then you can tell them what it's about. Uh, hanging signs in public places over bridges, or on our, um, on our balconies, for instance. You can get really creative with it. I recommend you try different ways that, uh, that come up to your mind and, and, and get, find the courage to do things that you don't come naturally necessarily. Like I give speeches in public transport. Every time I take public transport, I give a speech from car to car. And uh, cause it's an assured audience, you know? <laughs> but I have to work up my courage every time. So here's an example of me writing with chalk on the back of my car. This is in Montreal. Uh, I was going to plant that sign uh, in front of a main, uh, main road. 
So the last project is uh, another activist initiative, which is to make this transition plan go viral, right? So the objective that, the challenge that we have is that people are discouraged often by the fact that we feel alone and that we feel ineffective. Like I said, the opposition is constantly trying to discourage us, okay? So the solution is to report our work on these projects on social media. And we, 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 we say what we've done and we put a hashtag so people know that we're doing it consciously. There's something behind it, it's a movement. So here are some examples. Today I mail dropped 70 flyers while jogging. Uh, hashtag so gift society, hashtag DIYTP. Mail dropping, every flyer we put in a mailbox is, about, is worth about 50 cents. Um, yesterday I sent a Jacques Fresco clip in a message to all my phone contacts. So gift society, do it yourself transition plan. Or last week I convinced four more neighbors to join the local resource bank and recommended couch surfing to a friend. These things are actually very valuable, like I said. Recommending couch surfing to a friend, that's, that's the commercial equivalent of $50 for whatever resource bank that is. It, it's, it's very valuable. We are gold mines. So, doing the numbers, they're actually very positive. If just 50 of us start doing this, start planting, start sowing 50 seeds a week. Uh, sorry, 100 seeds a week. 100 seeds is very easy. Like, we can do it without even noticing. I, I, I leave the house always with, with flyers in my pocket. And while walking by people, I just hand it to them without stopping. And, and it's really easy to put it on car windshields. It's, it's cheap. Flyers can be cheap when they're black and white. But it, if you do it on social media or if you tell people in person, it's completely free. So it, it's, it only takes about a half an hour a week, if that. So you have 260 sowers by the end of the year with a 0.1 success rate, which is one out of a thousand seeds that we plant. One out of a thousand flyers or one out of a thousand people that we recommend joining this starts doing the same thing. Just one out of a thousand. So if we continue that rate, in seven years, 16 billion seeds will have been planted. So, everybody on the world will have been exposed to this. So this is very possible. We just have to do it. And in 11 years, so four years after that, everybody in the world can be calling for a gift society. It really is that possible. So, Well, I'd just like to leave you all with a quote by Jacques Fresco, a very famous quote. Says, if you think we can't change the world, it just means you're not one of those that will. So I'd like to, uh, if anybody is more interested in this, you're welcome to come and talk to me after the talk or when you see me. I have flyers that, uh, that you can take with you to, uh, to start sewing right away. And... This is a web page with the do-it-yourself transition plan. Changingtheworldiseasy.com or cambiaralmundosfacil.com and there you can find links to free collaboration networks. It's just starting, so there are only a few still, but it'll be growing constantly. There are also links to seeds to download and also to connect with all these organizations. So, uh, happy gift economy, everyone. <laughs>